Hey everybody, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila over there running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. You need to stop telling me jokes right before we go on the air, because I can't quit laughing. Today we're going to make smoked Gouda veggie melts on French bread. I'm telling you what, they're delicious. I'm at Kroger's last night looking for some shredded smoked Gouda for this recipe, and I found out the better the quality of the cheese is, the harder it is to find it shredded. I bought two packets of this, opened one up, and I slice it in little strips right across the cheese there, and then I cut all the little strips in little one-inch pieces. So it's not shredded, but it's close enough because it's going to melt on top anyway. So about 10 o'clock last night, I'm checking myself out down here at Kroger's, because they don't hire any checkout people past about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I'm in that self-checkout lane, and the lady says, I love Gouda cheese. And another guy over here says, anything with Gouda cheese on it is fantastic. And another guy going out the door said, I heard you were looking for shredded Gouda. They don't have it here, but they have it at Trader Joe's. Everybody loves Gouda cheese, so I thought, I got to make this recipe. Come on over, let's get started with some smoked Gouda veggie melts. In this bowl, we're going to mix up some vegetables. We got one cup of mushrooms. This is easy to remember. And you'll notice these are diced up real small. We're going to make roasted vegetables, but they're not going to be big chunks like you normally do when you roast them. One cup of sweet onions, and I'll put all the ingredients underneath the video. One cup of red bell peppers. One cup of broccoli. And you notice how small these are, because these are going to go on top of slice of French bread, and we don't want great big honking chunks on there, at least I don't. Then we're going to put in about, oh, maybe one or two tablespoons of olive oil in there. Now, so many times I see people take a dish or a tray, and they lay out all their vegetables, and then they drizzle the oil, and then they try to tumble it around on a tray and stuff. I always do it, whether we're making the big chunks of roasted vegetables or these little ones for this smoked Gouda veggie melt. I always put them in a bowl and tumble them because then it gets on everything and it's easier to do. Now we're going to preheat our oven to 425 degrees and we're just going to roast these for about 10 minutes or until they get soft and it won't take very long. Normally when you do big veggies it's about what 35-45 minutes? But these are only about little teeny quarter inch squares of all of our veggies. Doesn't that look beautiful, Sheila? Ooh, all right. Did you preheat the oven? No. All right. I'm going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 425. And this seems like this is coated just about right. Let me move my stuff out of this tray. And I got like a 15 by 10 glass tray. And I'm not so concerned about spreading these out where they don't touch. Like when you make normal roasted veggies. I just want to get them in here and get them soft. So they're going to kind of roast partially steam, ones that touch each other, kind of steam each other. And then, it's not in a lot of these recipes, but I'm going to give this just a little bit of sea salt. Not very much. Just a little teeny sprinkle on there. Just a hair. We're going to leave this uncovered. Normally we'd cover something like this with aluminum foil. We're going to leave this uncovered and we're going to bake it in the oven at 425 degrees until it's soft. But now we're going to make some other stuff while this is in the oven. Let's get started. Now normally I buy a loaf of French bread and I slice it myself, but I went to Kroger's last night and these were all perfectly sliced just for this recipe and I thought this is great. Now you know me, when I get a loaf of bread I got to run my fingers back and get the good stuff out because I don't like the heels at the end. So I'm going to pull off a few of these to get to the bigger ones. And if I was cutting up my own French bread, I'd cut it at an angle like this, and it would be a little bit bigger piece. So this recipe is really for eight, but I think we can get away with about ten because it's sliced straight across like this. I think so. Now when you're making bruschetta or some of those other recipes, I'll put this all back together later. 
When you're making those other recipes, a lot of times you'll rub olive oil on there and rub garlic on it and do all that. We're not going to do that today. We're going to take one half a cup of mayonnaise and, let me give it a little bit of room here, we're going to put in a teaspoon of minced garlic in the mayo. Are you with me on this, Sheila? I'm working on it. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. Them veggies sure look good going in the oven, didn't they? They did. And we're going to mix. Now you can go with a little bit more. You can go with a heaping teaspoon of garlic or one and a half teaspoons or whatever, but it's just straight up mayonnaise. And this is what we're going to coat our bread with here. I'm going to smear that on there. You're going to love this for the big game or just for your guests when they come over. And I think if this is making enough, I'm thinking this will coat 10 slices of this. And I'm thinking we're going to have plenty of veggies to go around, so it should be able to cover 10 of these little guys. And you'll figure out at the house when just keep adding bread and adding mayonnaise and adding garlic until you've got enough room for your vegetables when they're done. Now I'm doing this with the vegetables in the oven only about three or four minutes now. And you could actually wait until the veggies get out before you put this on here so it doesn't soak into the French bread too much. But French bread is pretty dense stuff, so I think we're going to be all right. I don't think it's going to get soggy. Plus, when we get our veggies and we put our veggies on top of here, we're going to change that oven in there from bacon to broiling. We're going to put this on the top shelf on the broiler only for about four or five minutes. Maybe not even that long. We're going to peak is what we're going to do. I peak all the time. We're going to open the oven, look in there, and when that cheese is real nice and melted, and maybe some of the little veggies sticking up on top, got a little bit of sear to them, you'll know when you want to pull them out of there. All right, that worked out about right. See that? could actually, and I might do that, I got enough in there for a couple more, so let's just do it on the fly here. We were going to do eight, then I thought maybe we'd do ten, now we're going to do an even dozen. Yeah, we got plenty of that mayo, half a cup of mayo. Or you can always make a double batch and do it for everybody. Look at here. How am I going to line these up, Sheila? I got to find some sort of a maybe just everything crazy looking like this would look the best. It does. I like crazy. <laughs> I know you do. All right. We got five and three and four. So it's like three, four, and five or something like that. Oh, I know. Let's go four, four, and four. Does that work better? Or did I just go from crazy to organized? Now you're organized. All right. There we go. You know me, even Steven. Perfect. Now when our veggies get out and they're nice and tender, we're going to put them on top. And then we're going to add this home spun, home chopped, home shredded, whatever you want to call it. This stuff is so good. Can you see them little slices, Sheila? You can. It's not shredded. It's hand sliced by Steve Hall. Let's go get our veggies in a little bit. Look what I got, fresh back from the oven. We left them in there 15 minutes, stirred them at about seven or eight minutes, about halfway through. They got a little color on there. They roasted up really nice. They're nice and soft. Now let's put this recipe together. I'm gonna let these cool for about five minutes first, and then we're gonna put them on top of our French bread. Wait a second, I had them going this direction, now they're going this direction. Who changed this? I did. That's what I thought. <laughs> All right, it's time to pile our veggies. Now you see why we cut them up so small, because that way we can get all these colors on here, on each one of these. Put them in the middle and kind of push them to the outside. And I like the fact that the mayonnaise kind of keeps them from falling off of there right now. Beautiful. 
boy, I cannot wait to try this recipe. It is so delicious. I can't wait to get a bite of this stuff. Let me load these all up. Be right back with you. They look like Christmas cookies. <laughs> they kind of do look like Christmas cookies, don't they? And look at here. Our veggies worked out perfect to do all 12 of these with one cup of each one of those vegetables. It did 12. And I mean right exactly to the last little spoonful. Perfect. Put some on that one. Which one? Here. Which one? This there. one? Him? Yeah. Why did he look deprived or something? Yes, it did. All right, he gets the last of the stuff then. You see any other ones that look like they need to be doctored up? It's kind of hard to get even with little teeny pieces like this. Because remember, we have to put on one more ingredient. And that is the star of the show, our smoked Gouda. And remember, I couldn't find any shredded Gouda at the, at the store. So I got smoked Gouda sliced. And I just sliced it up myself in kind of like little teeny strips. Let's see how this works out with these little bit bigger pieces. I think it'll work out just fine. Let me get these doctored up. Then we're going to move these to the broiler. And we're going to start peaking. I said four to five minutes, but we're going to start peaking at three. Because in the broiler, this cheese might not take long to melt. And because this tray is not hot, when I get this all on here, I'm going to pick up all the stuff that fell off the sides so there's nothing laying on the pan for Sheila to clean. I got to tell you, I cheated a little bit. I'm very impatient, so I just put piles on each one of them. Then Sheila helped me move these all over to one side. We cleaned off the tray and then just sat them back. And now we don't have to pick out any cheese in between. We're probably going to get some to run over the sides anyway. We'll find out what happens because we're going to put this in the broiler. Sheila, did you fire up the broiler? No. Okay, I'm going to go start the broiler. We're going to put these in there and really keep an eye on them. Like I said, we're moving it from bake to broil. Top shelf, put it on broil, keep peaking until this cheese melts and maybe some of this other stuff gets a little color and we'll be back and show you the finished product. I can't wait. Well, how did we do, Sheila? Wow, that looks great. Doesn't it look terrific? It does. I'm going to move him over just a little bit. I'm going to let this cool for just a couple of seconds, but before I do, I'm going to take just a little bit of parsley, not very much, just a little teeny bit for color more than for taste, just to give it a little bit of fancy schmancy custom chef looking stuff. God, that looks so terrific. Got just enough color on that cheese. That looks wonderful. You don't have to put any greenage on top here at all, or you can put whatever you want on there. A little basil or oregano or just Italian seasoning or nothing. We're going to let this cool for a little bit, and I'm going to give it a taste test. But it looks fantastic. Doesn't it look delicious? It does. Wow. All right. It's been about four or five minutes. Even the pan has cooled down enough. I'm ready to taste test this. I had my eye on this one over here. These vegetables are so delicious. Sheila and I were eating a few that were left in the pan over here. And they're so good, we're going to make just those and have it with like steak and baked potato. But it's time to taste test our little smoked Gouda vegetable melts. Mm -mm. And write down the top 10 most delicious things I've ever tasted. This would be in the top 10. That is absolutely over-the-top fantastic. I had to take another bite while Sheila was repositioning the camera. Sheila, wait till you try this. It is absolutely fantastic. I hope you enjoy this recipe. Smoked Gouda veggie melts. They're so good on that French bread. You're going to flip out. They're easy to make and so flavorful. We hope you enjoy this recipe, and we really hope you subscribe to our channel. Little Shotgun Red's face is going to pop up over here at the end of the video. If you click on that, we hope you subscribe. And then after you click on subscribe, next to subscribe is a little bell. If you click on that, you'll be notified every time we come out with a new recipe. This was one of the most fun, delicious, good-looking 
recipes that I'd ever want to serve to some guests or just have for the big game, you know, the Packer game, you know, or the Viking game, or the Bears, or she, or, or Bama, that's right, say it, go ahead and say it, Sheila. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, she loves that Alabama team. In fact, we're going to put some other recipes up over here that are easy to make, but most of all, is this the most delicious, still a little bit warm, smoked Gouda veggie melts you ever made or ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. I'll put all the directions and all the ingredients right under the video. You never have to go to a website to look our stuff up. But if you are out snooping around, we hope you visit ShotgunRed.com because we got our fish breading there, our videos there, our Shotgun Red dolls, all kinds of neat stuff. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. You better hurry up, Sheila. There's only 11 left, and then there'll be 10, and then there'll be 9, and there'll be 8.